Let's try to understand the magnetic properties of transition metals. So here is a complex ion of nickel. That's nickel NH3 taken six times. Cl2. So this is our the one that is represented in square brackets. That's our complex ion. There are six ammonia ligands. And uh, so let's try to figure out the oxidation state of nickel. So ammonia is a neutral molecule, so the oxidation state is zero. And we have two chloride ions here, so the oxidation state is negative two. And let's say the oxidation state of nickel is unknown. So that is x negative two or minus two equals to zero, x equals to plus two. That is the oxidation state of nickel in this complex ion, Ni2 plus. So we know that the oxidation state of no, sorry the oxidation state of nickel is two plus. So let's try to write the electron configuration of a neutral nickel atom. So the abbreviated or the condensed electron configuration of nickel is three d eight four s two. So since it's uh, Ni two plus, so these two electrons will be lost. So the condensed or the abbreviated electron configuration for nickel 2 plus would be 3D8. So in this complex ion, Ni2 plus, we have six ligands. So we have six ammonia molecules in this fashion. And each ammonia molecule basically forms one coordinate covalent bond. So that's one bond. This is the second bond. And this is the third and this is the fourth and this is the fifth and this is the sixth so basically we are saying that each ammonia molecule can form one coordinate covalent bond or we can call it monodentate it means it can form only one bond because it has one lone pair or one electron domain basically in this molecule. So since there are six coordinate covalent bonds, so the coordination number here, coordination number is basically the number of coordinate covalent bonds formed in this complex ion. Since there are six, we can say the coordination number is six. Now let's try to understand the magnetic property of this complex ion. And we said the oxidation state of nickel in this complex ion is plus two. So nickel plus two, or nickel two plus, has an electron configuration of 3d8. So when the electrons of this ligand and the electrons are in the d subshell of nickel, when they come close together, basically, they repel each other. And that repulsion is so strong that that splits the D subshell of nickel into two sets in this fashion. So the 3D8, which is basically this, let's say I draw the orbital diagram in this fashion. That's one, two, three, four, and five. So they have eight electrons here. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So when these electrons are approached by the ligand electrons, that repulsion splits this into two sets. And this is how it splits. It splits into one set of 3d orbitals. So these are the 3d orbitals. And they're called T2g. And this splits into the, the other set has two d orbitals. We call them as eg. So this is the lower energy set, T2g. This is the higher energy set. And the energy difference between these two sets is usually represented by a delta with a small subscript, lowercase o. So that is the energy difference. This represents the energy difference between the two split D subshells. So we have to arrange eight electrons. Let's go ahead and arrange eight electrons. So that's one, two, three, four, 
five, six. So we arrange six electrons here. We are left with uh, two. So the remaining two electrons go into this higher energy set called the EG. Now if you carefully look at the electron configuration in this split D subshells. So nickel 2 plus has two unpaired electrons. So those are the two unpaired electrons. Now how do they impact this complex ion? Since nickel 2 plus in this complex ion has two unpaired electrons, we can call that as paramagnetic. Now what does paramagnetic mean? Well, when you say paramagnetic, these electrons behave like tiny magnets. Electrons behave like tiny magnets. That means when you place this complex ion solution in an external magnetic field, so they're attracted, so we can say that they're attracted by an external magnetic field attracted by an external magnetic field. So that's why this is said to be a paramagnetic uh, substance because it has two unpaired electrons. Each electron acts like a tiny magnet and if you place this solution in an external magnetic field those electrons would be attracted by an external magnetic field. That's what paramagnetic means. So you need to have unpaired electrons for a substance to be called as paramagnetic. On the other hand, let's take a look at a different complex ion. For example, let's say I have this complex ion of uh, cobalt. So let's draw this separation here. So I have this cobalt complex ion. CO NH3 taken six times and let's say the oxidation state here is three plus so cobalt is in an oxidation state of plus three or three plus so whose electron configuration is basically so if I have a, a neutral cobalt atom this is the condensed electron configuration that's 3d7 4s2 so CO3 plus would be 3D6. And since ammonia is a fairly strong field ligand, so when these electrons in this D subshell, let's say one, two, three, four. So there are six electrons altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when these electrons are approached by the electrons of ammonia, when this splits into two sets, T2G and EG, so that's my EG set, and this is my T2G set, and that's the energy difference we are talking about delta, and this is T2G. So this is a strong field uh, complex ion. So we have altogether six electrons, and this is how the six electrons can be arranged. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you must be wondering, why can't we arrange the, the remaining three electrons in the other d orbitals? Well, the energy gap is fairly large. Why is that? Because you have a cobalt ion, which is in a higher oxidation state, uh, which means the charge density on cobalt ion is greater and you have a fairly strong field ligand ammonia which causes a fairly large amount of splitting so because of that larger energy gap it's energetically more favorable for these electrons to pair up here than move there so it requires less energy to pair up here than occupy those D subshells in the EG set so now if you take a look at this electron configuration so there are no unpaired electrons so there are zero unpaired electrons so when you have no unpaired electrons basically you can call that uh, the condition as diamagnetic now when we say diamagnetic well if you have if you place a solution of this in an external magnetic magnetic field so that will be repelled 
So a substance that is repelled by an external magnetic field is called diamagnetic. So that's what uh, paramagnetic and diamagnetic materials mean. So in a paramagnetic uh, material or substance, you have unpaired electrons like here, which act like tiny magnets. They're attracted by an external magnetic field. Whereas in a diamagnetic substance or material, you have no unpaired electrons. So there is no situation where they can act as magnets. So they're simply repelled by an external magnetic field.